Big thank you to this week's video sponsor, Adobe Stock. More on that later. Hello everybody and uh, welcome to the top of Snowdon. Well, that there's the top and yes, you're you're gonna have to take my word for it. Uh, zero visibility, yeah, not good for photography, but let me tell you my plan. I am walking down the uh, Rid The path. I think I've said that right, Rid The. And uh, my car is parked in the Rid The car park. And uh, my plan is to walk down back to the car over the next couple of hours and try to take a photo at least every 10 minutes. And uh, I'll explain why I'm gonna try and do that. Right, so I would describe myself as micro lazy. And uh, what I mean by that, hello sheep. <laughs> uh, what I mean by that is something completely different to lazy. For example, one of my favorite things in the world to do is walk up and down mountains. I don't think that's a, a particularly lazy trait. However, if I need to change the kitchen bin, for example, because it's full and I'm trying to get something else in it, I will do all I can to squeeze whatever I'm trying to put in the bin in the bin rather than change the bin. Similarly, I will wait until I've got two and a half thousand unread emails in my inbox before I think, mm, I should probably clear that up. So if you've sent me an email recently, I apologize. Uh, yeah, I don't see all of them. And also from time to time, believe it or not, my brain will convince me that something is not worth getting my camera out for to take a photo. Even if I've got my camera on this capture thing here, uh, sometimes I'll just think, oh, is it worth getting a picture? So lazy, absolutely ridiculous. It doesn't cost me anything to store a photo on an SD card. It's laziness, micro laziness. And uh, today, the aim of the game is to stop that by having the goal of getting photos every 10 minutes. It was gonna be every five minutes, but uh, I didn't fancy my chances of getting a photo every five minutes in this. Although, after a couple of hundred meters of descent, it should turn into a nice summer evening if uh, what it was like coming up is anything to go by. So. Fingers crossed. I don't like the sound of crows while I'm going down a mountain. I feel like they're waiting for me to slip. Ooh, there's a tiny bit of mountain appearing over there. Do you see it? Let's get a shot of that. The camera's having an absolute nightmare focus in, so manual focus, and then we'll just focus on infinity. F8, and that should do the trick. And then we just wait for the mountain to appear again. Well, that's a shame, but uh, I think for that one, we've had the best that we're gonna get. Time to move on. Oh, just turned back and there's a bit of uh, visibility. Who'd have thunk it? Ooh, look at these lakes coming out. 70 mil. Go on, quick. Uh, one thing I would say is that these conditions typically require some patience because the fog is shifting around quite a lot and therefore different things become visible at different times. Clearly, with the concept of this video though, patience is not a virtue I can uh, afford. So I'll carry on running. This is... Uh... This is quite a nice bit of the path. Ooh. Ooh, the knees. Yeah, wide, just get out of the way of that rock. 24 mil, folks in the middle, F9. Visibility is slowly improving as I get down, which makes sense. Uh, I think I'm at about 900 meters now. Summit is 1,080. Oh, there it is. Right, camera at the ready. Well, I'm a tiny bit worried about cutting it a bit fine for this 10 minutes, so these sheep will have to do. 70 mil, give me a portrait. Hey guys. Yes, love that. Nice one. Oh, look at that. In line with the path. F4.5 to kind of blur this foreground a little bit and draw your eye to the drama of the hills in the background. Nice. 
Right, gilet off and uh, telephoto on. Although look what I've done. Again, 400 gram bag, nearly half a kilo of jelly babies. I give myself the excuse because I'm walking up a mountain, but it's ridiculous. I won't have any teeth by Christmas if this carries on. Turns out I'm actually not sure about the 70 to 200 for these exact conditions. Works brilliantly for mood, but there's a lot of haze around today as well. When there's haze, it can kind of make your subject a bit, well, not completely obvious. Might switch back to the 24 to 70. I mean, good a time as any, isn't it? It's, um, it's a little bit cloudy for the sort of shot that I want. There's a cloud right in front of the lake, although it is about to depart, so that might look quite nice, actually. Stick that in photo mode. Come on, cloud, get out of the way. Move over here so that you're sort of in line with that lake. Show you what I'm on about. Move a bit more. Tiny bit more, that's perfect, right. Right, 2470 back on and gilet back on because uh, it's going to be nippy this time of night and uh, I'm still quite high up, so yeah, getting cold. Really didn't need to give you an explanation as to why I put a coat on, a sleeveless coat at that. Thirty-five mil. I um, I love the drama in this rock here. Looks so good. Well, I think inadvertently this has turned into a uh, a ten photos from video, which I didn't necessarily intend. But uh, I suppose it makes sense when you're on a mountain and you set out to take a photo every ten minutes. You're going to end up with ten photos, or twelve if it takes you two hours to get down. So yeah. Looking forward to popping those on Instagram. If you don't know what my 10 photos series is, basically I go to a place trying to get 10 photos. Very similar to this really, in fact the same as this. I don't usually stick a one photo every 10 minutes stipulation on it, but very similar. Where's the next photo? Oh, the summit's coming out. I suppose it'd be rude not to get a, uh, a photo of the summit peeping out, wouldn't it? 70 mil. Underexpose a touch. The thought very briefly crossed my mind then about whether I wanted to go back up to the summit now that it's shown itself. Luckily, I checked in my bag and my head torch has not got any battery. So that's ruled that idea out. Bit of an idiot coming out with a head torch that's got no battery, to be honest, but live and learn. Hello, sheepy, don't run off. Thank you. It's not the nicest looking sheep, that one. Um, not sure that'll make the cut of 10 photos. Sorry, we've got fluffy bits in front of the GoPro again. Wind thing getting in the way, sorry about that. Uh, you might think it's a bit strange choosing to look towards a gate when the light is starting to kick off over there, but to tell you the truth, I do get drawn to uh, gates that have got clear sky behind them. Don't know why, but it's something just quite, visually pleasing about them I find. I know that's probably a bit weird. Right this is where it starts to get a little bit trickier. Uh, as you can see I'm about to lose the drama of Snowdon behind this hill that I'm walking down now and uh, the light that you can see is reflected light off of the sea because it's not quite golden out yet so the sun isn't low enough to peek through those clouds if it does at all and we're going to lose the drama of the views as we head down so this is maybe where it starts to get a bit more interesting in terms of trying to find photos every 10 minutes. I'm going to rush down this bit because there's nothing to see here really uh, and hope from memory that there is something just a tiny bit further down. Yeah, that's, um, that's a lovely view, terrible photo. Works well, great as a view, but it's far too messy as a, a photo. You've got the ripples on the lake and then all this quarry stuff in the foreground. And then actually a really busy sky as well, but uh, lovely to look at. And I'm pleased I stopped because I actually prefer the view of this lake from here, there's less foreground interruption here as well. So at least I can just get a photo of this and 
and that'll be nice. Tell you what I am thinking here though, pano. Yes, I'll do a, uh, I'll do a big stitch. That'll look good. 24 mil. Nine shots stitched together. That might look quite nice. We'll see, maybe not. Here's another micro lazy thing for you. I've been overheating for about half an hour and uh, rather than stop, take this jacket off, stick it in my bag and be much more comfortable in what would probably take 30 seconds, I've decided that that's too much effort for the past half an hour in the face of 3,000 feet of elevation. I don't understand my brain sometimes and I'm still not stopping. It's a, uh, another pretty gate with hedgehog in the background. That's, yeah, that's nice. I can get on board with this. 35 mil again, just to make sure that I don't catch this gate here. Yeah, it's a nice scene. F35, blow the background a bit. Just focus on the gate. I will get an F10 version as well, just so that I have a, a version with the mountain in focus too, but yeah, that's nice. They, uh, someone's sock there. What are people doing on their afternoons out? Don't know. Look at that. Oh, there's a nice bit of cloud coming over that mountain too. So we're at 50 mil, F16 for a bit of a sunburst. Lovely. Well, here we go, folks. Last shot of the day. The, uh, the sign for this tiny little train station. And as you can see in the background, Snowden has got absolutely no cloud on it whatsoever. But uh, serves me right, should have charged my head torch. Look at this. Micro lazy. Disgusting. Ugh. Hello all, I'm, uh, I'm back in my office, as you can see, and um, I've had a shower, which is good for everyone, apart from the fact that it's the hottest it's ever been in here today, and for some reason I've decided to wear a long sleeve t-shirt. No idea. Anyway, you might remember at the top of this video, about 15 minutes ago, I mentioned that it was sponsored by Adobe Stock. And uh, you might not know what Adobe Stock is, but basically it's where all the world's leading creative professionals go to seek inspiration, to show off their own work, and to have the chance to license it to millions of buyers. Uh, and in short, it gives you the chance to make money from your own work in your own time. You can upload whenever you want with the possibility of collecting royalties for months and years to come. And by collecting royalties with Adobe Stock, you can quite literally be earning money as you sleep. Uh, uploading is simple, you can do it through Lightroom. And with Adobe Stock, basically you're giving customers the opportunity to license your work rather than selling it, which means you keep all the rights you have to your images. So I'm gonna be uploading a few of today's photos. I'm gonna be titling them and I'm gonna be giving them all 15 to 20 tags to uh, help people find those images. And it's a really easy process, particularly with images like this, because I'm not including any logos, there are no modern buildings and no recognizable faces, unless you count the sheep. But uh, that basically means that I don't need any releases. And as I mentioned, you can either work from within Lightroom or you can go to the upload page and drag and drop as you please. Uh, once you've done that, your images will be reviewed by Adobe's moderation team and they'll be checking things like exposure, focus, noise, basically just making sure it's a good quality image. And after that, you'll have chance to start earning some money. So if you've got hard drives full of great images from holidays, photography trips, morning strolls, afternoons in the garden, then let Adobe Stock help you make some money from them. So you can get started by going to the link in my description and a big thank you to Adobe Stock for their support of this channel. It's much appreciated. And a big thank you to you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I quite enjoyed the uh, the challenge of trying to get a photo every 10 minutes. Worked quite well in the end and um, cheating a little bit with that location. It's a fantastic track up towards Snowdon, up to Snowdon, not towards. You do, you do get to the top, um, even if it didn't look like it. I did get to the top. It was just, just really cloudy. Anyway, I'm starting to waffle on. Uh, I'm gonna go and change my t-shirt. I'll see you next time.